Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about custom middleware in Django. In this video you will learn how to set up a custom middleware where you can add information at the website depending on if you are in debug or not, where we're going to print out the website URL and we're going to find out how much time this page took to render. Okay, so let's begin just by checking out what Django says that a middleware is. So a middleware is a framework of hooks in the Django request and response processing. So it's a light level or low level plugin for globally altering Django's input or output. Specifically, you can add information to the response or the request. You can change the HTML and a little bit like that. And then to write our own middleware is actually very easy but it depends a little bit on what you want to achieve. For example, you have the Django debug toolbar, which is a very advanced type of middleware, which makes it easy to have a simple debug uh, bar on the right side, which gives you very much important information. And then you have very simple middleware that, for example, can just uh, check how long time you used to return a response or you can write information at the bottom of the screen if you are in debug and similar. A middleware can also be used to add uh, global static information to the pages that you need like the website URL or similar except that this is usually available in the request parameter and similar. But Let's say that we want to create a custom middleware that prints out the website name at the bottom of the website um, when you are in debug mode. So on my computer now I have created a new app called Simple Website with nothing else than this inside. Okay, so what I want to do here now is to create an app where we have our middleware. So Python mentioned by start app. And then I can call this whatever I want. Maybe just Stein debug. So then I can open this in Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you want to use. So the first thing I want to do then is to just open up the settings.py file and register the app here in installed apps. So here I just say Stein debug and save. And then inside the Stein debug I want to create a file called middleware.py and then I can begin by defining a class here so class stein debug middleware and the first thing we need to do in this class is to initialize it by saying def in it pass in the self parameter and get response and then in here we just say self.getResponse equals getResponse so that we are forwarding this into the middleware and beyond. And then every time this middleware is called we are using this function def call pass in self and the request parameter. And then here I just want to say response equals self.getResponse and return response. And this is just so that this doesn't stop anywhere. So if you go back to the documentation of Django, you can see that this is done here as well. So you see the response equals get response and similar, or here in the class best views like we do. So this is one time configuration and install uh, installation. And down here, we execute this request before the view and similar. So now that that is done, we can actually go to the settings.py again and register this middleware. So the um, ordering which these uh, are executed is that when you get a, res a request, it starts there and go down. Oops. So it's begin with it, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then when you are returning something, in the request, then it starts at the bottom and go up again. So we can put our almost anywhere we want. I just like to have mine above the common middleware because that's where I used to put this. 
So here I can say Stein Debug, which is the name of the app. And then middleware, which is the middleware file. And then just Stein Debug middleware, which is this class here. So then I can save this. And if I now just go in here, and here is just a print called Stein Debug. So we can see in the console that this is called. So if I go to the terminal now and run the web server, if I now go to the browser and the refresh, okay, name response is not defined, should be a response, of course. Go back and try again. Then here we can say call Stein Debug. Nice. So then can go back to the task which was to print the name of the website at the bottom of the screen so we can create a view very simple view first so here we can say def index pass in the request parameter return um, and here we actually can't use a render because this is not hooked in to the template functionality that you can use in the middleware so here I just need to go to Google and check something if it's not mentioned here. Process view, process execution, process template response. This is the one I want to be using. And then you can see here that I need to use template response or equivalent. So let me go into this. And then you can see here how I can use this. So we just need to specify the request, the template and the context. So it's very similar to the render functionality. So let me just go back to views.py and at the top here I can import this from Django.template response, import template response. And then here I just say oops, return template response pass in the request parameter and specify the template that we want to use. So then I can create a new folder for the template as well. So templates and the file itself index.html h1 index and save. Now we can import that view into the urls.py file from steindebug.views import index path empty index and save so if i go back and refresh here you will see this index page and you can see that this is still being called nice so then we want to tap in to the function that is mentioned somewhere here go back the process template response so if I just copy this function here, go back here again, say def, and I also want to pass in the self, uh, self parameter since we are using a class. And then here I can just say return response and print just to make sure that this is actually being called. Go back and refresh. Yes, then you can see Stein debug there and then process template response, which is what we get here. So what we then can do is to say response, oops, specify a template name, for example, website URL equals HTTPS code with Stein.com. And if I then go to the template here, I can say website URL. No, that did not work. Response website URL. I thought that should be working. That does not actually work. No, forgot to do one thing. You have to say response.context data, pass in website URL, which is just the name of this property, and then the value. So go back here and refresh and it's still not working. Okay, so I 
find out what the problem is and that if I go back here that is that I actually try to um, inset this variable or this value to a variable that really doesn't exist so in the views.py I need to add a dictionary here here for example I can say title testing middleware if I then go to index.html I can say title up here to print a title and then this website URL will come from the middleware here. Refresh. And then you can see the title there. And you can also see what's coming from the middleware. Um, it might be better to set this information up here. So self.website equals. Create the dictionary. URL. And then we can move this up here. And then we just say self. Uh, so response dot context data website equals self dot website. Now we can print the URL by saying website dot URL instead, which is a little bit better because then we only assign this up here when we initialize this. And then we only want to show this information if we are on debug, as you can see here in the settings of Pi. This is set to true. So we can import this variable up here from django.conf import settings. Now we can say if uh, settings.debug, then we refer to this variable. And if it's true, we assign this variable down here. So now we can see that we are in debug. So it's showing. But if I change this to false, Go back and refresh. Then you can see here you must set this. Okay, we need to add something in this allowed here. Just the local IP address. Run the server again. Refresh, and then this is gone. If I go back and set this to true again, refresh. Then we'll see that we see this. So. Why should we want to do something like this? If we had, a, for example, a little debug bar, div style, padding, 20 pixels, background, red, and color white. You are in debug. The address is, and then we show the website URL there. And then we close the div. But now this will always be showing this div here. So maybe in the middleware we could also add um, debug and then settings.debug. So we know from our middleware if we are in debug or not. So now we can say if website.debug then we show this div here and if refresh it's there if I go and set this to false then the div is gone nice so then we have a way of using middleware to show information in our app based on if we are in debug or not as well so Maybe we also want to know how long time it takes before you go into a page until the template is rendering. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. So to do that, we need to import something from Django. From Django.utils import time zone. So that we can calculate milliseconds. Then we also need one more function here called process view, where we pass in or use the parameter self, request, view func, view args, view cave args. So this is then information about the request, which view we are on, the arguments for the for that view, and similar. So here we can say print view func, so we can just see what this is. And save that, go back and refresh. If I then go here, you can see here that we are using a function at index. So this doesn't really give us any information, but 
it is what it is. So here I can say um, self dot oops self dot start time equals time zone dot now. So now we get the timestamp right now. Just want to set this up here as well. Um, self dot start time equals none. And then we override it here when we are using a view. And then below here we can say response dot context data and say um, website dot response time equals time zone dot now minus self dot start time. So let me just refer to this one and minus right now and we add one more variable to the website up here. Maybe we can actually set it as none as well. And we can test this now by refreshing. Okay, the dictionary has no attribute response time. Maybe if I do it like this. Refresh, yes, now the error is gone. And then on the index page here, you can say break line, the response time was website.response time, save, refresh. So now you can see here, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, and then the milliseconds we used to render this. Perfect. So that's basically how you are using a middleware in Django. If you want to check out more about what middlewares can do, you can check out the official documentation from Django here, tux.django.com, and just search for middleware. And that's what is it for this video. If you have any questions about today's code, feel free to leave a comment below and I will answer as soon as I can. See you in the next video.